what's up patreons oh buddy this is the chicago bulls fake dynasty episode five of six mm. five or six we have arrived Woo! after the 96 bulls did they thing what did I tell you about the league and how it deludes teams and teams getting weaker with all that moving around? Guess what happened, ladies and gentlemen? Guess what happened? Something strange happened. Something very weird took place. Do you want to know what that was? The NBA decided to fight back. The other teams decided, hey, if they're doing this, why are we sitting here not doing the same thing? We need to get better. We need to be doing what we need to do to get better. And nobody felt like they were. But if you look at the NBA, all oh, the league was different. It was an anomaly. All the teams were basically winning. The East had just as many winning teams as the West. It was crazy. The Miami Heat won 61 games. The Knicks had won 57. The Detroit Pistons had won 54 games. The Atlanta Hawks, 56. 54 for the Charlotte Hornets. The Orlando Magic had won 45. Even the Bullets had a winning record. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. The Bulls, it was 69 and 13. They had six teams in the East who had won over 50 games. Six teams in the East. I kid you not. It was the craziest I had ever seen in the NBA playoffs in 97, in that 96-97 era. The West had the Utah Jazz who had won 64 games that year. Carl Malone played insane. They were a whole new team that year. But teams were restructuring themselves. The Charles Barkley had joined the Houston Rockets. And Clyde Drexler and, you know, Akeem Olajuwon, as they made another run for the championship, they won 57 games. The Sonic Supersonics had won 57. The Lakers, who just got Shaq. You know, the year prior, I mean, this year here, because the year prior, you know, they got beat in Orlando, so Shaq joins the Lakers, and the Lakers go and win 56 games that year. People think the Lakers sucked when they had Shaq. They didn't suck. They just weren't a better enough team to beat uh, the Utah Jazz's lineup. Now, Every game and every team that got in the playoffs were massive. But the Timberwolves had a losing record and got in. The Phoenix Suns had a losing record and got in. The Clippers had a worse record than anybody and got in at 36 and 46. I can't believe they got in. But they did. <laughs> so, as you see... Everything was basically laid out and the whole world was trying to compete to get to the Chicago Bulls who had won 72 games. But the Bulls, the reason why they were able to win is because they had their same nucleus. That nucleus they had was genuine. And it was hard to crack. 
it was very hard to crack. Now, the Chicago Bulls, once again, um, were dominant in the East, uh, dominant with the, with the lower teams, but they were just as dominant with the winning teams as well. Now, they were 1-1 one one against Utah. You know, they beat the Vancouver's. You know, it was the Bulls' problem was <clears throat> they once again lost to the Raptors. Sorry about that. The Bulls' problem was simple. Success. Victory had defeated them. Not Michael Jordan. Jordan had just signed his deal, and this was the first time on the contract you were going to see that massive 30-plus million dollar deal. Now, when you look at the gist of everything else, Dennis Rodman was getting ready to retire. He told the Bulls and he told Michael, well, I'm leaving. They was like, huh, what do you mean you're leaving? Uh, this is it, I'm out. Rodman was retiring. And his agent was the main one who saw the situation for what it was and was like, the hell you mean you retired? <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. Why would you be retiring when we just won a championship? Like, what is Dennis's move here? So Dennis is like, like, well, tell us what you want. Dennis wanted a $22 million deal. He was like, I want a two-year $22 million deal. Or this is over for me. Like, I don't see a need to be here. You know, this is basically, you know, his motivation. So he's like, I'll just retire and go to Hollywood and do some movies. Rodman became the biggest thing in the world. And that's what people don't realize is that Dennis Rodman became bigger than life when he was uh, in Chicago. That was cool for Michael Jordan, but it really wasn't cool for Scottie Pippen who became like the third wheel in the city and kind of felt like he was being forgotten. So the Bulls was in negotiation with Dennis for a new deal and Scottie is pissed because they was like, well, Scottie should have came first. Scottie's been here all this time and nobody's negotiating with Scotty, and he's like, just wait your turn, Scotty. You know, it's coming, your deal, and everything else. They were talking about where we're going to talk about restructuring his contract and do this for Scotty. But Scotty, in his haste, would always talk bad about Krause, Jerry Krause, and all these things. So naturally, they like... Well, why the hell are we talking about doing something for him? Jerry, you know, Jerry didn't invite him to his wedding, I mean, to his house, and he was wondering why I wasn't invited. It's like, dude, did you know you just called this dude a fat M alpha? Why would he want you at his house to embarrass him in front of people? It didn't make any sense. So... It was clear that he don't he didn't see the error of his ways a lot of times. And when you're that naive to situations, then you know, it is what it is. But he was just very naive to the point where it was just not even making sense for somebody to be that naive and dumb to the scenario. 
So the Bulls end up, you know, talking to Michael because Jordan was like, is this true? Robin finna retire? Dennis is going to, he's like, no, it's a negotiation. <laughs> like, don't listen to Dennis. Like, this is his agent trying to negotiate. Because um, Michael's like, whatever happens, don't y'all get cheap. Pay that man. You know, we can't lose Dennis. And that's what Michael Jordan told Jerry. He said, whatever you got to do, I don't care what it is. I know y'all going to negotiate. I'm just saying, don't let Dennis go anywhere. And he's like, I mean that. Don't, don't, I mean this. Do not let Dennis Rodman go anywhere. So, they turn around and they move Dennis to a negotiation to where they say, well, Dennis, we can't afford to pay you that kind of money. But what we'll do, Dennis, is this. They said, this is what we'll do for you. They said, here's what we're going to propose. We'll give you nine, $9 million to start just this one season. They gave Dennis $9 million. And then the next year, they was going to give him like 4.5. But they weren't going to give him 22 million. Because they said, we, we just don't have it. We got to get other players. And, you know, but let's say if you're a good boy or you do this X, Y, and Z, then you might be able to get this in the long run. So Dennis already knew that wasn't going to happen with him. Dennis wasn't stupid. He know he couldn't behave. So. I never forget they had. Um, they announced it in the paper that. Dennis signs a one-year deal extension. The terms weren't to be discussed. And the reason the terms weren't being discussed is because they said Scotty's going to feel a certain way because we're trying to renegotiate with Scotty and it's a delicate situation. And Scotty, you know, he's a little tense about the contracts. So, you know, don't talk about the deal, of course, or what you're getting, and blah, blah, blah. So that happens. Dennis is signed. Jordan is happy. They got Dennis Rodman. Now all hell is finna break loose. <laughs> the Chicago Bulls have got to free up a lot of, you know, different people all together, right? They said, well... We got to free up a lot of people on this roster. And they said, well, I don't get it. And they said, well, people are not going to be here probably no more. <laughs> and they were like, well, they don't get it. Like, what do you mean people ain't going to be here no more? And it's like, look, people were here and they're not going to be here no more. That's just all to it. And they just didn't understand what that meant. What it meant was Jack Haley was going to be gone. They couldn't keep Jack Haley anymore on the team. So when they decided, all right, well, let's look at what we got. Jack Haley was no longer on the team no more. They had Brian Williams on the team. We ended up chasing his, changing his name to Bison Dele. Brian Williams was on the team, and he was the essential piece in helping the Bulls out. He was great with us, the Detroit Pistons. We got him after the fact. But um, the 
you know, it was just one of those situations where it was embarrassing. You know, it was quite embarrassing for a lot of people who was depending on the Bulls to be all this together. Scotty was, you know, stubborn about the situation and Michael was just making sure they had the same nucleus in place. They had Ron Harper and he felt like, okay, we got a chance to, you know, win it again. Because this is what Mike is in for three seasons. This was the Bulls' plan, you know, like, let's get Dennis locked in for three years. Mike didn't want to play without Dennis. So locking him in for three years was essential. So now that that case was over with, and they're locking him in for three years, and they got Dennis all taken care of, and Ron Harper's there. Mike is feeling real confident about the season. So the Bulls make another announcement. They signed somebody else that they think they was going to have a chance to get. Nice veteran on the team. Goes by the name of the Chief, Robert Parrish. Now, when they signed the Chief, Robert Parrish, everyone thought, okay, well, Chief get to go out with the Bulls. He'll probably get a ring. You know, that's good for the Chief after all he's done for the NBA. Good pickup for the Bulls. Bill Cartwright is now an assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls. So Cartwright is still staying, you know, connected to the team as the leader, vocal leader. So Michael is trying to whip everybody into shape in the offseason. They're getting ready to start preseason. You know, they go into practice, everybody doing, getting to know each other. The whole nine, right? So, when they get Robert Parrish, signed him, bring Chief in. Chief has played <laughs> for I don't know how many seasons. He's coming into, he's done all this before. He played 20 years in the league. He's coming into a whole different environment. Now, Chief get there, and they're having a practice. And all of these things are going by a lot of people's heads, but Chief was... Chief was one of those people who were very passionate about the game, but very prideful. And you can't get him to shut up. You can't get him to, you know, not speak. He was going to be that main guy to talk, to say what he wanted to say. You couldn't get him to shut up. So, when you look at everything all together, you start looking at what the team was about, what the Bulls were about. It was about Michael Jordan and everybody else falling in line, or you're going to get your head knocked off. That was just it. So... Once again, Jordan pulls that. I got to show everybody I'm the superior man. It's my league. Nobody's on top of the league but me. So the team got to know. So he's letting the young guys know, hey, this is how it is. Like Steve Kerr already didn't got a black eye. So he know what time it is. He's like, look, my eye's still messed up. I don't want no parts, no smoke. So his eye already jacked. 
Jordan separates the team. Just like he did on the last video I just told you with the Pistons players. He comes over here and he calls. He's thinking he's the man, you know, so he comes right in and right away he's calling the shots. And man, he comes right in and tries to tell breaks up the scrimmage tells Phil who he wants on what team and first they doing the scrimmages right and Jordan's on you know Chief is on the first team right so they got Chief on the first team and you know they playing with Robert Paris Jordan's playing with him then they he wants to redo the team and he moved him, he moved the chief to the second team. And was like, you go to the second team. So he moved Robert Parrish against him. So Parrish took that personally. And they put Luke Longley in there above the chief. And Luke Longley ain't got 20 years. He's been in the league about five or six. You know, chief 7-1, Luke about 7-2. <laughs> you know, they some seven footers. And Chief didn't take too highly of that. So it's Rodman, Dennis. Um, they had Dennis on their team. They had Jordan. And on the B team, it was Robert Parrish, Tony Kukoc, Steve Kerr, Jason Caffey. And I think that was it. I think Mike had Scotty. It was Mike, Scotty, and and uh, Dennis on that team with Luke Longley. And I want to say Ron Harper or Randy Brown. I think it was Randy Brown because I think Ron Harper was on uh, Chiefs team. They moved Ron to the B team. So... After they, they moved it around, they rotated, but the Chief was over there. So they played. And Jason Caffey, Robert Parrish, Tony Kukoc, Steve Kerr, they whooped. <laughs> they whooped. They ass. <laughs> They mopped the floor with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and Luke Long. That was the four that they had over there. They got they ass whooped. So Jordan is like pissed. So he wants to play another game. Now the game starts again. Because Jordan wanted to play another one. Phil was like, all right, let's call it. And he was like, F that. You know, Mike, F that. No, we just getting warmed up. Come on, let's play. The game was going again. They started whooping the Bulls' ass again. Mike kept coming down the lane. They went to Luke Longley. The chief was taking Luke Longley to school. He, that boy, got an education on what a real big man can do in the paint. Robert Parrish was hitting hook shots, fadeaway jump shots, shots going way high arc and one shot just dropping in. It was unbelievable. Robert Parrish was looking like he was 20 years old again and flying up and down the floor. Got steals, blocks. Jason Caffey dunked the ball hard on, <laughs> on Scottie Pippen. And Mike got on Scottie for that. Like... The F you doing, man? Let me let this rookie do this to you. <laughs> Y'all playing sleep out here. So Michael's out there going off, trying to bring the team back, and then the game was over. There wasn't enough for them to win. They couldn't stop the Chief. They couldn't. They were getting killed. So they put Dennis Rodman on the Chief in the third game. So he was just shooting over Rodman. And still hitting. 
on Dennis. And they was, come on, Dennis, get in him. Get in him, Dennis. Get in him. Stop this MF stuff, right? So Mike talking all this trash. Chief ain't said a word. So Chief go up and under, and then Mike tried to come over and help and do a chase block from behind, like creep up from behind and swipe and block Chief. Chief pulled the ball down, went up, shot it again anyway, gotcha. And went in off the backboard and went in. And he's like, oh, man, we shouldn't even count that. That's some bull. You know, Mike just cussing up a storm, right? So Chief is feeling it. Now, they won two games. It's the third game. Feel ready to call it after this. Chief and them win. Game was kind of close, but they pulled it away, and Chief and them won again. Fourth game. They get annihilated. Jordan, Spence, Scotty, and them, they get annihilated. Steve Kerr hit a three. Um, Jason Caffey was still hitting shots. And then they was Tony Kukoc was hitting shots, hitting threes. So they was just running and gunning. And then the Chief was getting the paint. They was just killing them. It was so much. It was, they were looking like the Golden State Warriors. Guys was moving, using the big man. Michael Jordan was just trying to do everything with him, Scotty, and they really didn't have a point guard to help him out. They really needed guidance. Jordan was trying to do everything and trying to compete. So it was over. Mike wasn't talking. Phil called it. It was like, that's it. So Chief goes up to Jordan and goes, how you like that ass kicking we just gave you? And Mike go, what? <laughs> like, he walked up. He was, yeah, yeah, how you like that ass whooping we just gave you? He was like, man, Mike got up in his face and started talking like, oh, what, what are you talking about? Oh, man, like, are you for real? Like, we're not really going like 100%. If we was going 100%, oh, y'all wouldn't win the game. Oh, get everybody back out here. It feels, no, no, everybody go to showers. No, no. So he's talking like, you You know who you talking to? <laughs> this ain't the 80s. And that's what he told him. This ain't the 80s, Chief. He's like, you got a couple of shots. He's like, you had a couple of lucky shots, but this ain't the 80s. <laughs> and then the Jason Caffey's like, man, he was like, man, you ain't going to talk to me that way and think I'm supposed to. Everybody like, you, man, be quiet. That's Mike, man. He's like, man, I don't care who he is. He don't impress me. I didn't play with the best. Mike just looked at him in disgust and anger was in his eyes. He couldn't believe the Chief was talking to him like that. But Chief been in the league 20 years and he talking. Jason Caffey came and grabbed him. He was like, no, like F him. I didn't play with, I played with the best. I played with Mikhail Bird. I didn't see Oscar Robinson. I, I didn't play with the best in the world. <laughs> I didn't seen the best in the world. I didn't play with the best. They don't impress me. <laughs> He's like, I got three championship rings. You ain't going to intimidate me. So Jordan didn't say nothing back. Jordan didn't say nothing back. He just stared him down in disgust and anger. Next thing you know, this was going to be the last season the Robert Parrish ever played in the NBA. <laughs> I kid you not. And it, it wasn't that the Chief couldn't play. This was it. So... Mike just wanted to see that fire anyway, but he knew I can't say nothing to Robert Perry. Like, that's the chief. But Phil ended up talking to Chief uh, later and was like, you know, what Michael's doing is he's trying to get these young guys in line. If they see you going against him like that, then they're going to feel, you know, why do they need to follow Michael's orders, you know, so. That's why I'm talking to you, you know, like, go easy. Like, Mike ain't going in on you. Like, Mike was like, 
not trying to disrespect the chief. You know, that wasn't his goal. But Chief didn't like the Chief didn't like the way Mike he don't like that. Cause he played with Larry Bird. You know, like look, I played with Larry. Larry's a leader by example. He gonna go out there and do it by example. He ain't gotta do all that yelling and, you know, the belittling people. That's not how Larry did things. And he's like so it's different ways of leadership. I see if that's the way Michael know how to do it, you know, that's the way he do it, but there's other ways to lead people, and this was just not the way I'm accustomed to. So that wasn't going to happen with Chief. So in case anybody wanted to know what happened there. Now, <laughs> here we go with the season. The Bulls had no problems in the seasons. Like, as far as any other challenges, except for the fact that all these teams in the East are winning. But they know they only got to beat one of these teams. And can nobody really contend with them in the way they look at things. The Bulls are like, the playoffs is all that matters. We just got to stay healthy. Now, here comes a situation that ru starts ruining its ugly head. You know, a paternity suit is coming out of nowhere from a woman who claimed Michael Jordan is reneging on financial obligations that was promised to her. You know, they made a financial agreement to stay quiet about their relationship. And she wants money. She wants more money. She's seen Michael Jordan winning these championships and getting all this money. She wants more money now. So she's trying to shake Michael Jordan down in the midst of all of this that's going on. Now this is getting ready to hit the news in a minute. She's ready to give a reporter a full in-depth conversation discussion. A one-on-one -on -one about the whole Michael Jordan, my night with Michael, and all this craziness. So this was getting ready to, you know, the people were leaking like, oh, there's some rumblings about Jordan's relationships in trouble. So... You know, Jordan's image is everything. You know, his image is brand. That's why his marriage to Juanita was so important. It took away from everything that was transpiring when you were saying, like, well, what is everyone else doing at the time? Where was everyone at and all that stuff? This superseded all of the nonsense you've seen beforehand. The relationship with Juanita was key for all business engagements, the whole nine. So right away, things started to change. People started to make their own decisions based on who they believed, who they wanted to see succeed. You know, so Jordan used his money and power to eliminate that whole interview and made it all go away. So for a moment, she got some money and she was okay on whatever they did or whatever they took care. I know they signed something to block any interview and Mike denied any craziness. But here's another problem on the horizon. Mike used to go out every night, every night at home games. I don't think there's a night Michael Jordan went straight home at that game. He would go drink some beer in the locker room, get dressed, and Mike is out on the town. Mike's not coming home to about 3, 4 in the morning. Game at end about 10 o'clock. Mike isn't coming back. <laughs> Mike ain't coming home. Mike isn't thinking about coming home. Only things on Mike's mind is where's the party? Where are we playing cards at? 
Mike has so many locations for playing cards and games. It just made no sense. So, Mike would go out drinking, partying, his girls and all this. And he would get a ride home, so you'll never see Michael Jordan getting a DUI. Michael Jordan was doing what Michael Jordan do. He would get a ride home from a Cook County Sheriff who was there. And the Cook County Sheriff picked Mike up, bring Mike over, drop Mike off wherever Mike wanted to go. And, you know, it was a female, white lady, you know, Cook County Sheriff, about in her 30s. And you know, Mike was doing his usual thing. And while doing his usual thing, Rumors started to come out about Mike and that Cook County Sheriff. Because normally a Cook County Sheriff, you know, they got a job to do. It ain't usually the same person all the time. And everything you know, here comes this Cook County Sheriff taking the escorting Michael Jordan's car. As Jordan pulls off. Cook County Sheriff, because if you see the Cook County Sheriff person, you're going to say, okay, well, that's the sheriff doing it, doing their job. Well, word around the campfire, Mike was having a lot of fun with this woman, and it ended up getting back to the household, and it was bad news, and Juanita had had enough of Mike going out every night, partying, you know, living the life, and she's at home, he's coming home at four in the morning from gambling and playing cards, and she's like, this is not going to happen. So she wasn't with it. Now, Scotty has been told at the end of the season or before the end of the season they're going to talk about restructuring his contract. So that's enough to keep Scotty on the line. But they Scotty's being too much of a headache and they're telling Michael like Michael, we're trying everything we can with Scotty. You're going to have to talk to Scotty. So they told him and he told Scotty, I mean Michael told him like, "Hey, Scotty, man, like, what's the problem? You know, we you going to get paid. They going to take care of you. You know, they know what you've done. They know what you mean to the organization. You're going to get paid. If anybody getting paid, you getting paid, Scotty. Don't worry about it. But Scotty is worried about it. And because Scotty was worried about it, so was everybody else. Scotty was like, man, they don't pay me this time and this and that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he was always putting threats out there and all of this stuff. So the team was like, we are almost prepared to make a deal to say bye-bye to Scotty Pippen. Like, we we trying, Mike. <laughs> we trying <laughs> To be nice, but we can make a deal right now and get rid of Scottie Pippen, and we can get Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp is, you know, they, he's unhappy where he is. We'll have a chance to get, you know, Sean Kemp. Michael Jordan did not want Sean Kemp. He was thinking, like, this is not what I'm looking for. This is not what I'm thinking about.
So right away, right away, they go right into a a uh, position where Scotty's okay with what's going on. Like they come to a impasse where they're gonna say, "Okay, we'll work on it and do this and that." X, Y, Z. All of this nonsense, right? So when everyone's talking about, oh, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and this is it. As I always told people, that was one major flaw in the system. As many people didn't see it, the Chicago Bulls weren't all there connected. They weren't as connected as they should have been. Well, I just remember the girl was screaming all the time for Dennis Rodman. Rodman had all of the attention. He had all of the girls. It was Rodman. He was getting all the attention. So Michael, for the first time in his career, he could take a back seat. He didn't want the fame at all. Dennis could have it all. He can care less about any any of the fame. You want the fame, you can have it. Mike did not want it. Mike was sick of it. He was tired of it. It's invasion of his privacy. He can't enjoy what he wants to enjoy. So it was making him very miserable. And what Mike loved is card games. <laughs> now, if he can't do those card games, there's a problem. Mike don't like problems. No. I remember Shortly after that, Mike was kicked out of his own house. Um, this was a different time for the team because at this point, I think I'm a little ahead of myself. Okay, I did some stuff I don't normally do. I'm in the midst of playing this game. But, um, yeah, I might be ahead of myself. I don't think Mike got kicked out to the, to the last one, to the last season. But I remember he came home on Mother's Day. She had kicked him out. And he used his mom to get back in the house. Now, when it comes to the actual basketball game, they were good. 
There was no team really out there because they had the continuity to keep winning. You know, the other teams just didn't know how to close. They hadn't played with each other. This was a lot of guys' first time playing in the series against the Bulls or anyone else. The Bulls have been together for years. So it's nothing but another series with them. Like, when they played the Washington Wizards that year, the Washington Bullets, uh, the Bullets didn't know how to beat the Bulls. They had a better team. Like, they had a team that could have won some games. Like, in game two, was really close. They just didn't know how to close it out. You know, and Mike just showed them why he's Michael Jordan. <laughs> you know, they won by one point, but it was a close series. Probably most competitive series they've had of any team that they've played in the playoffs. And that includes the Utah Jazz. That was a matchup that was tough. With Jawan Howard, uh, Chris Webber, and George Mirasant. You know, uh, Webb was hurt a little bit in that series. And I felt that that changed a lot for the dynamic of the rest of the series. But Calvert Chaney was doing great. Uh, you had Rod Strickland and man, they they had a team. That was a that was a young five that if they would have stayed together, who knows how far they would have went. That was a devastating five. That was probably I would say the most the most um the most work the Bulls had to do in a first round in a long time. That first round was what they needed to get woke up. Because them, them young boys was coming. They were bringing it. Now, you know, unfortunately, injuries done that team in and they didn't stick together long. But like I said, this is another time where people got to, like, adjust on the fly and, be, and, you know, learn to play together in one season where the Bulls pretty much have their nucleus in place. So that didn't really change anything for them. You know, everything kind of remained the same. Now, I remember there was quite a few rumblings about Like, who was the best? You know, like, who was the best? And people had to find out on their own. Now, sorry about that. This video game is throwing me off. But me looking at it from that status quo, I'm looking at a whole different enchilada. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm looking at a whole different enchilada, buddy. 
The enchilada I'm looking at is different. So, when I say I'm looking at it differently, I'm really looking at it differently. When they played against the Wizards, that was their biggest conflict. Now, when they went on and played in the next round, it was, I'm trying to think, who did they play in the second round that year? I know they played the Bullets. I think it was, was it the Atlanta Hawks? I don't even know who was on the Hawks at that time. Forgive me. I just, memory ain't going back that far. But that series, um, I couldn't tell you too much about it except for the Bulls won. I think Atlanta won a game against the Bulls and the Bulls was winning but as you can tell from watching the season the Bulls was fading they weren't the same dominant team they used to be so you know the tide was shifting and they get to the finals teams were catching up to them they weren't really the dominant Chicago Bulls or playing that kind of basketball that people were accustomed to them seeing, they were getting a lot of help. So in the Eastern Conference Finals, that's when they played the Miami Heat, who had finally gotten to the Eastern Conference Finals. They was ready to take on the Bulls. So they thought. This was the easiest matchup for the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> The Miami Heat was tailor-made to lose to the Bulls. They had Alonzo Mourning, Tim Hardaway, Mashburn, Rashad Leonard, and forgot who else. I know they had Dan Marley on the team, but they were not going anywhere. Like, they were done. They had no answer. For Michael Jordan. And when you got no answer for Michael Jordan. Vashon Leonard trying to guard Michael Jordan. It was embarrassing. He was just going to tear them apart. There was nothing that they could do. Um, Jordan averaged about like 30. 32 in that series. Or 34. But I know he was destroying them. As Morning kept trying to fight with Rodman, he was mentally out of the game. And once again, the Bulls are back in the finals. Um, it was too easy. Now, the Utah Jazz versus the Bulls, you know. I would say out of all the series, they were never in this one. The Bulls could pick that apart. The way they play, pick and roll, basketball, Stockton and Malone, that was going to grow old. Rodman would come in there and basically kind of shut that down. After, I would say, a beatdown that they got in the second round or game two, after Jordan hit the game winning shot in game one, game two wasn't close. So they come back and they win two against the Bulls. And everybody got really excited because the Bulls was like, whoa, they lost two in a row. What are the Bulls going to do? And the last two games were very close. But the Bulls, I felt, was never in any danger of losing. You know, this is when Steve Kerr hit the shot and they won the championship in game six after losing a tough game five. Now, Jordan went off in that game five that clinched it. And this is where, you know, champions are born. 
You know, but the dynasty that they talk about for the Bulls, I mean, the reason why it's fake is because this was the first year they really had adversity or a challenge. And the games were tight. And the young guys was catching up to them. So it was actually some competition, but the problem remained. Everybody were new, getting new teammates, and everybody was switching around to try to stop the Bulls. You know, and how all these guys jailed in one season, the Bulls kind of held the nucleus in place. They can just add a player or two, and they can just pick up right where they left off because the nucleus is the same. Rodman is devoted to defense. You don't have to worry about him taking shots. You know, and that's all Mike needed. And Scotty, you know, Scotty's got to be out there doing what he's doing. So everybody was covering up their man, you know, doing their part. So now that this is done, everybody's rolling around till it's time to take care of Scotty and his contract. And, oh, baby, here comes the final chapter. <laughs> so don't forget to super chat. Um, hit the like button. All of those wonderful things. This is the end of part five or six, and we'll talk later. Peace.